In this example, we're going to be walking through how to connect a variety of different tools from within the digital ecosystem uh, so that you can run a variety of different analyses in STK as well as linking that to other tools to understand the downstream consequences of the results you're getting from STK. So in this example, what we're going to be looking at is Constellation Design to optimize where we put our assets for a dual sensor coverage across the entire globe. So here's one such representative design in STK. Beyond just the geometry considerations that we're looking for, we're also going to be looking at an oversimplified cost model to understand not only whether or not the system can do the job we're asking it to do, but roughly what the cost is that goes into assembling such a constellation. So over here on the right-hand side, what you'll see is an Excel spreadsheet that allows me to evaluate roughly the cost per satellite, as well as the launching cost, payload cost, and then other considerations about how much it's going to cost to launch based on what altitude I choose to put the satellites in, and then their uh, inclination, as well as other considerations like the payload that I choose to employ. So here I have two separate tools doing completely different types of analysis. I have SDK on the left doing all of the dynamic geometry and the physics evaluation of what can each of these satellites see. And on the right-hand side, I've got my Excel spreadsheet. So in order to link the two tools, I'm going to be using Model Center. So Model Center is a tool by Phoenix Integration that allows us to bring in, as you can see down here at the bottom, a wide variety of industry standard tools. In this case, again, just to keep the example easy to understand, I'm only linking STK to Excel. Now, when I talk about linking the two tools, what I'm showing here is the link editor that has all of the different properties uh, we've specified are of interest in my SDK scenario. So for example, on the satellite that is the basis for the entire constellation, uh, I have things like the semi-major axis and inclination of each one of those individual satellites, as well as properties of the entire constellation. So over here, I'll have the number of planes and the number of satellites per plane. When it comes to the cost model that I'm employing, I have a lot of uh, inputs that are going to come from the STK model and then drive the overall cost in the Excel spreadsheet. So for example, on the right-hand side, I want to look at the total number of satellites that I'm employing in this constellation. So to do that, I'm actually combining two different parameters from STK the number of planes multiplied by the number of satellites per plane. That will lead to the total number of satellites in this constellation. You can also see that I'm looking at input values like the inclination from the propagator of the satellite, as well as the overall semi-major axis, which defines what altitude I'm launching the satellites into. Uh, this interface makes it very easy to drag and drop links from one tool to another. So whatever parameters are available to go in and out of STK are also available to go in and out of the Excel spreadsheet. So then once I choose a specific configuration, now I've got all the properties linked upstream down to the Excel spreadsheet uh, after the fact. So in this case, I can go ahead and run my model, and I'll actually be able to get the overall total cost of the configuration of the Walker Constellation that I have set up over here. All right, so what you're seeing here now is the end result here that has estimated the cost of the constellation that we've designed, which is a 6x6 six six constellation with our satellites at a 1600 kilometer altitude and a 50 degree inclination. And here you can see that scenario represented in STK, as well as those values in the cost analysis spreadsheet uh, resulting in the overall total cost uh, for this constellation. So in addition to simply linking tools, the other thing that we have available from Model Center is the ability to execute a trade study or an optimization study. So now we're going to iterate on all the different input parameters we could have. So from here, I'm going to show an example of an optimization that we've run previously. So the input design variables, again, are the number of planes and the number of satellites per plane in the constellation we're designing, 
as well as the orbit altitude and the inclination of the satellites in each one of those planes. So as constraints in the overall constellation design, from STK, we have the coverage results that tell us how many assets are covering each grid point at every time in the scenario, as well as what the overall revisit time is to each of those grid points. I'm using those two characteristics because I'm looking to optimize a constellation for persistent stereo coverage, meaning my revisit time can never be greater than zero. I need persistent or constant coverage of every grid point. And for the N asset, what I'm looking at here is I need a minimum of at least two satellites covering every grid point all the time to meet that stereo objective. So what you can see on my constraints is I have a minimum of two satellites required for my N asset calculation, and I have a maximum of zero revisit time uh, for that metric in the coverage definition. So these are the constraints. However, the overall objective here is to minimize the total cost of the system. So doing whatever I can do with my input values to meet these objectives and then minimize the overall cost of that system. So after I ran through this trade study, I can take a look at the results that were handed to me. So here's a summary page of what we put into it, what we just discussed. And then on this tab, we can actually see what the overall best design was that was achieved. So we can see here that the optimal configuration ended up at about a uh, $20 billion price tag and actually ended up being a five by six constellation, five planes, six satellites per plane at an orbit altitude of 1,523 kilometers and then uh, at a, an inclination of 45 degrees. So that achieved my objectives as well as minimized the total cost. So in addition to just the individual best run that we had, we also have the ability to interrogate each of those runs. So here I have a data table showing every single run that was computed during the optimization trade study and all of the values associated with those. So a data table is nice, but there's a lot of other ways to visualize information. So here's one example, uh, 3D uh, scatter plot that shows every one of the individual uh, pairs or what are the individual data sets evaluated and then what the overall result was. So plotting here based on differences in inclination or in orbit altitude, the result on the total cost, uh, as well as many of these that were just uh, infeasible because they didn't meet the objectives as defined. So in summary, what we've actually been able to do is run thousands of iterations here of not just an individual tool, but linking both the STK scenario to the Excel spreadsheet using the model center interface and the optimization study. So we're linking tools as well as uh, iterating on all the trade studies to understand what the optimal value is. And this is with commercial off-the-shelf software available uh, right now, probably tools that you have available. So if you want any more information, please feel free to contact us.